From Transport Topics in Washington, D.C., this is Road Signs. Here is your host, Seth Clevenger. Thank you for listening to Road Signs, the podcast series from Transport Topics that explores the trends and technologies that are shaping the future of trucking. In this episode, we're going to provide an update on the development of autonomous trucks. Over the past several years, technology companies have been actively testing self-driving trucks on public highways in the United States. Along the way, they've been partnering with truck manufacturers, large shippers, motor carriers, and logistics providers to further shape this technology and bring it closer to commercialization. But how much progress has been made? And how are these efforts paving the way for a future when autonomous trucks will truly become part of the country's freight transportation network? To help us answer that question, we're going to speak with two industry experts who are right in the middle of this ongoing development work. Later in the program, we'll discuss the evolution of vehicle sensor technology with Robert Brown, Chief Strategy Officer at Spartan Radar. But first, we're excited to welcome Charlie Jett, Head of Commercialization for the Autonomous Trucking Division at Waymo. Thanks for joining us, Charlie. Hey, Seth. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, so let's start off with some recent news. Uh, Waymo and J.B. Hunt just announced a long-term alliance to commercialize autonomous trucking technology. Now, this all started with a limited pilot program last year, but now you're working together to make fully autonomous freight operations a reality in Texas in the next few years. So, Charlie, just tell us a little bit more about this collaboration. Uh, What have Waymo and J.P. Hunt learned so far from working together? And what's next for this partnership? Yeah, Seth, it's a really exciting alliance and collaboration and and one that's been uh, very close in, in the work I've done while being in this role at Waymo. So we're expanding our work with J.B. Hunt and, as you mentioned, entering into a strategic alliance focused on developing and commercializing autonomous technology for Class 8 trucks. So uh, just a bit more about the collaboration, what's involved there. So we're developing a program, which is a series of pilots and other studies and preparatory efforts to get ready for our fully autonomous launch, where we're planning for J.B. Hunt to be the first partner and the first collaborator when we reach that fully autonomous operation. It's a really exciting mutual opportunity for us to know who we're going to go to market with first and also exciting opportunity for J.B. Hunt to have access to uh, such a transformational technology. And then we're also going to be looking broader than just the deployment of the technology and also looking at uh, what does the operational preparedness look like for a fleet and a company like J.B. Hunt where there are opportunities for technology integration, such as with their JB Hunt 360 platform. And what's really unique about this collaboration, at least um, to our knowledge, is um, it's unique in its long-term focus on preparing for real, true, fully autonomous deployment and commercialization at scale, which we think is really essential in this B2B environment of trucking and the depth of expertise that goes into from multi-parties to develop the technology successfully. And then on your second question about what we've learned so far, um, first and foremost, we've already seen really good performance. So in the pilot we did with J.B. Hunt last year and one of their top customers, uh, we were super happy with the results. J.B. Hunt was super happy with the results. Their customer was super happy. And that was across both the AV performance as well as just the operational freight movement. So really good just to see that as far as the development of our operations, our technology, that it's come quite far already. Um, The second, though, is that there's definitely going to be some ways that autonomous vehicles need to adapt further in order to fit in seamlessly with freight operations. And the reverse is also true. There's some ways where the freight industry, whether it's a fleet like J.B. Hunt or their customers, are going to need to adapt in order to take full advantage of autonomous vehicles. Uh, That's things like load selection, uh, planning for which loads are being carried by which trucks, making sure loads are secured properly, et cetera. Uh, And then the third is really just a validation in our long-term business model, which is a driver as a service business model, which we're pursuing this model where we are bringing the technology to bear and planning to enable fleets like J.B. Hunt to take advantage of that technology and seeing the expertise that J.B. Hunt brought into the mix through the pilot really just validated that they are in such a great position to take advantage of this technology. And we think that will be able to commercialize it more successfully by putting it in their hands as opposed to trying to do something like build a fleet ourselves. And in terms of what's next, um, over the coming months, uh, expect to see us launch uh, additional pilots with J.B. Hunt and their customers. And then over time, you'll see us um, uh, make strides on some of those broader explorations around the, the commercialization of our technology. 
Okay. Well, it's certainly fascinating to watch uh, these uh, partnerships develop between you know, big names uh, in the freight transportation industry and technology developers like Waymo to really start to make this technology uh, viable and, and kind of pave that way toward commercialization. But looking a little bit more generally at your development efforts, what can we expect to see from Waymo Via this year as we move deeper into 2022? And what are those next steps toward that ultimate goal of a fully autonomous operation? That, is, that really is the ultimate goal, Seth. And that's our North Star uh, at Waymo and Waymo Via is reaching fully autonomous operations that we can scale to real, true commercial value. And that, that's something where our expertise on how long Waymo as a company has been working on autonomous technology puts us in a really strong position to be able to go after the right goals. Um, some of the big things in 2022 that we're doing in, in support of that broad goal on the trucking side, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about expanding our work with partners like JB Hunt uh, and continuing to carry freight and really prove out the long-term business model. So, uh, you know, we're definitely doing a lot more work this year around uh, trying to build more foundations about what that long-term business model entails, make sure all the pieces are, are put together on our side from partner side, from an ecosystem standpoint. Um, the second big theme is, is around testing. So uh, really doubling down our testing focus on uh, the Dallas to Houston lane, which is our intended uh, first fully autonomous lane uh, that we'll be working on with JB Hunt. Um, and so as part of that, we'll be opening up our uh, operations center in Dallas, which we've been working on for a couple of years at this point. Um, and it's designed to be used with uh, commercial partners, uh, accommodate hundreds of trucks and, and personnel as we scale. Um, so getting that off the ground and really just kind of accelerating our operational testing efforts will be great. And then the third big area is our continued work with Daimler on the development of um, the custom freight liner Cascadia designed to be uh, ready for fully autonomous operations in collaboration with Waymo. Sure. And maybe I'll pick uh, right up on that. Um, you know, we obviously discussed your uh, partnership with a motor carrier like J.B. Hunt, but you know, the OEM side of it is also very uh, important. And uh, as you mentioned, you're collaborating with Daimler Trucks North America, working to develop a Freightliner Cascadia model that's piloted by the Waymo driver. Uh, so really integrating your two technologies. Uh, so if you could just give us a quick status update on that project and describe the work that has gone into you combining your self-driving technology with uh, the Freightliner truck. Absolutely. I mean, this partnership is absolutely critical uh, to what we're trying to achieve and couldn't ask for a better partner than, than Daimler uh, on this first effort. In terms of a status update, I mean, the, the headline is it's going great and we're making lots of progress. Um, some kind of anecdotes on that front. We've received the first vehicles uh, from Daimler that we're actually integrating uh, fully our Waymo driver onto these prototype vehicles at our Detroit facility. And these will actually eventually come online on public roads later this year as part of our testing program. So earlier last year, we got some initial prototypes uh, purely just for our design and hardware engineering teams to kind of play around with and make sure all the, the progress is being made effectively. But now we're actually building up the first set of prototypes that we're gonna be operating on public roads. So that's super exciting. Um, and this, is the culmination of a ton of work throughout last year and the year prior on a deep collaboration between the two of us on the Freightliner Cascadia model that you mentioned, where the work that we're really doing is at the interface of the truck platform and the Waymo technology. And in doing so, we jointly developed uh, over 1500 requirements for the vehicle uh, that Daimler uh, have helped develop and are now implementing on the vehicle develop development process. So basically using um, our expertise on having integrated our technology onto multiple vehicle platforms, both trucks and cars in the past, we've developed a really robust understanding of what's the level of requirement and safety needed and all of the interfaces needed in order to integrate autonomous technology. And of course, Daimler has unparalleled expertise on how to develop a, a production ready truck. Uh, and so we've combined those two things and, and now we're starting to see the results uh, with um, taking in and building up some of those first prototypes. Um, and and these, this type of collaboration is, is really essential, especially from a safety and reliability standpoint. Um, so safety is the North Star at Waymo. It's a huge motivation for why many of us 
got into this industry and joined Waymo. It's a huge part of our origin story of where we saw an opportunity to take technology and improve road safety. And so doing it properly in a deep partnership with uh, the OEM, uh, like Daimler in this case, uh, is really essential to make sure that the product that we eventually put out is production ready uh, and capable of withstanding um, all sorts of scenarios that you hope never happen, but you have to plan for, and you have to ensure that you can execute, you know, minimal minimal risk maneuvers in the event that a system goes non-operational. That you've got backup systems on the most critical ones like steering, braking, power, et cetera. So, um, really important partnership and and great progress so far. Yeah, well, certainly a lot of redundancy that goes into the engineering and, and planning. Uh, once you uh, remove the driver from the loop, um, that's a whole nother level of of safety huge amount and, and it's not my area of expertise and so i only you know appreciate the tip of the iceberg i'm sure but it's it's really incredible work and you know looking at this emerging uh, segment of the you know technology space and autonomous vehicle space in the trucking industry uh you know waymo of course is is one of several well-funded technology companies that are really working hard to develop and eventually deploy autonomous uh technology in the trucking industry but in your view, what's different or unique about Waymo's approach to commercializing uh, autonomous trucks? Yeah, I think our approach to commercializing, the uniqueness is actually even broader around our approach to developing the technology in addition to commercializing it. We kind of view those as one very holistic picture. Um, so number one is is what I was just describing around safety expertise. So um, I think across the industry, everybody um, views safety as paramount. Um, but with our over a decade of experience in developing safety processes and methodologies, I think we're in a particularly unique uh, position to be able to develop extraordinarily safe technology, as well as uh, validate that it's extraordinarily safe. That's, that's one area where we've gotten uh, really incredible learnings from being able to actually deploy a fully autonomous, regularly operating service with passenger cars. Um, there's obviously a lot of similarities and a lot of differences between cars and trucks. Uh, but one thing that carries over really, really well is how do you actually measure whether a system is safe enough for fully autonomous operations? We're able to take that and then apply it to the trucking side and actually work backwards from it uh, to in ensure that the work we're doing from day one on the trucking side is really working on uh, that, that long-term goal of safety. Uh, the second area really builds on that expertise as well, which is just um, on our differentiated technology approach, as well as the differentiated expertise we have. So we are uh, very unique in the industry across all applications in that we are a fully uh, full stack, vertically integrated uh, technology solution on everything on the autonomous system. Obviously, we're partnered on the actual vehicle side of things, but when it comes to all the components needed to make the vehicle drive itself, we design and develop everything in-house. So that's across the hardware, the computing system, and the software stack, and the infrastructure like simulation, for example. And there's incredible benefits you get by being able to co-design these solutions around each other and accelerate the flywheel of learnings that you get between hardware and software, between real-world operations and simulated operations. Um, in terms of the commercialization approach, then how we build on that in a unique way is I think we're uniquely developing a, a very tailored product for the trucking industry. And I think this is well demonstrated by uh, the relationship we've developed with JV Hunt, where we're not just building you know, something in a box and saying, here you go, good luck using it. We recognize that this industry is actually quite unique in that and unique to technology in general, where you know, this is one of the most, you know, physically uh, intensive and technologically intensive uh, developments in any industry, uh, you could argue ever. Uh, and so the level of collaboration that's needed to ensure that not only the technology works, but it works for the business uh, that it's trying to help uh, is really essential. And then lastly is, uh, you know, something we're lucky to have being a part of uh, Alphabet and our long storied history is just some stability and trust that we bring to the market. And I think an easy way to think about it is, uh, you know, in a very rapidly evolving industry and what's undoubtedly going to be a very long term challenge to solve. I think that other companies, including our partners and future prospective customers, 
can look at Waymo and know that, you know, we're going to be around in 10 years uh, and um, just have some stability and know that it's worth putting in the investment in, you know, a five plus year collaboration because they know that, you know, if any company is going to be around, Waymo's got the resources and the backing that, that we're going to be here. From time to time, an issue commands so much of the industry's attention that it requires a deeper dive, a resource readers can turn to, a transport topic special report. We're turning our attention to another big issue, electrification and the key factors that will drive this industry trend. In every case, we're working to provide our readers with information, analysis, and clarity on key issues confronting fleets. One comprehensive resource packed with insights that can give you the edge. Transport Topics invites you to learn more about our special reports. To reserve your copy of the latest special report, visit ttn.ws forward slash electrification. Yeah, certainly, as you mentioned, uh, Waymo has been working on this for, for quite a while. In fact, you trace your origins back to the uh, Google self-driving car project and uh, it started in 2009, I believe. Uh, but, you know, as you mentioned today, you know, of course, the company is developing autonomous vehicle technology uh, for passenger cars through Waymo One and also commercial trucks through uh, Waymo Via. But what have you found are the biggest challenges uh, you've encountered as you work to apply the technology to, you know, class eight trucking um, on highway operations and, and really make it fit with the freight transportation industry? Yeah, great question, Seth. You know, initially when we first started um, on our trucking program in 2017, uh, the first thing we had to do was just prove our hypothesis that, as was our intent, we had built you know a technology platform that could be applied to multiple applications, and and we actually saw really good results on that from day one. And another parallel challenge was uh, more deeply understanding the trucking industry and the level of receptiveness there would be for the technology. Now, on both those fronts, there's still, you know, lots of work that remains, but I think we've been really pleased with both the level of transfer that um, has carried over on our technology platform and as well as the general interest and receptiveness in this technology amongst industry. I mean, the more we learn things that like the, the driver shortage, uh, the absolute crunch that capacity is under right now as a result of the pandemic. Um, there's clearly tons of value and interest in the technology. But, you know, one of the biggest challenges that you wouldn't necessarily uh, think of or see kind of looking at the outside in on Waymo is the level of intricacy that goes into um, developing a technology platform for multiple applications at once. Um, and so doing it and executing in a way that we're able to fully unlock the benefits and the flywheel that comes from having developments on the passenger car side that feed into the trucking program and vice versa um, has been a huge area of focus for um, the last couple of years as we've scaled up the trucking program quite a bit more. Um, and it's one of these areas where it's, it's probably one of our biggest challenges, but then one of our biggest rewards uh, because the shared benefits of that technology platform are so powerful. Um, and we're pretty confident that we can get it right, but we spend, you know, a lot of uh, late nights trying to figure out how to execute uh, most successfully on that front. Sure. And, you know, as you continue your testing today, uh, your self-driving trucks uh, still have a safety driver behind the wheel as, a, as they're traveling on public roads. But, you know, again, your goal ultimately is to enable unmanned operation with no one in the truck, you know, at least on certain freight lanes. Uh, so what types of routes and, and what trucking applications uh, do you think will be best suited for fully autonomous operation? Yeah, so that's the goal. And like I mentioned before, you know, we're, we're confident in our ability to achieve that goal because we've been able to do it already on the passenger car side. So we've got that playbook. We're, uh, you know, adapting it and executing against that on the trucking side. Um, and this is definitely one area where it's really interesting to collaborate with the industry to figure out the answer of, well, what are the best applications? Um, and yet another great example where that driver as a service business model, we think will create overall more value for the industry uh, because Waymo alone certainly doesn't have the answer to that question. Uh, we're not living and breathing the freight industry and you know pricing trends and where capacity is moving. Um, some of the insights that we've gotten so far in terms of uh, strong applications are 
um, line and long haul routes. So uh, longer routes where, you know, these tend, tend to be routes where uh, the driver shortage is even harder because it's a more difficult job to fill just because it's, you know, a lot of folks don't like to be on the road for multiple days at a time away from family. Uh, and it's also an area where you can uh, unlock quite a bit of value from the autonomous technology, from an efficiency standpoint, from a cost standpoint, from a safety standpoint. Um, geographically, this is really going to focus uh, from our side on kind of the southern U.S., starting on the southwest U.S. Uh, to start. A lot of that is driven by um, our technology roadmap prioritization, uh, things like weather, um, things like regulatory support is really strong in those regions. Um, and we're going to be pursuing what we call a transfer hub model uh, to start. Uh, so this is where rather than picking up uh, a fully loaded trailer at the origin and dropping it at destination and doing the full journey, fully autonomous, you instead pick up that uh, fully loaded trailer with a manual truck, bring it to an autonomous transfer hub where you make a transfer between that manual truck and the autonomous truck. This is a way where we can uh, expand the reach of the autonomous solution, make it available to more use cases faster uh, without needing to overhaul that pickup and drop off process, without needing to map and drive uh, and have the capability to drive in dense you know, city environments with a large truck. So it's really an acceleration model. And then lastly, I'll say in terms of use cases where we think there's going to be really good opportunities around um, uh, lanes and customers that have a lot of predictable repeat freight. Um, so that's one thing that's nice about um, our focus on the Dallas to Houston lane is there's there's a lot of uh, shippers uh, on that lane that have you know many loads a day, many loads a week, starting and ending at the same place, predictable volume week over week, such that we can really hone in on those requirements. And then over time, you know, you'll see us uh, take on some of the more dynamic, you know load here, load there, you know, multi-stop journey type things, but really starting on uh, strong routes where there's predictable demand and a clear value proposition for the, the value that the AV tech brings. Yeah, well, thank you for that roadmap and uh, just shifting gears just a little bit, you know, whenever we have a, a conversation about autonomous trucking, I think it's important to discuss what the technology does and doesn't mean for uh, professional truck drivers. And yeah, I think that most observers within the industry uh, view this technology as something that will complement the industry's workforce rather than displacing it. Uh, but I really want to hear your perspective on this. Uh, do you see this technology as a way that, you know, that can ultimately support workers in the trucking industry in the future, uh, perhaps by addressing some of those challenges you mentioned earlier around you know, driver recruiting, uh, driver turnover, uh, and just making the job more appealing uh, for that next generation of truck drivers? Uh, perhaps by uh, using automation to help craft jobs that are more appealing for, for the workforce. Absolutely, Seth. And I think that um, part of why this is the case is uh, folks who haven't spent much time in the AV technology industry uh, maybe at first imagine that this is going to be a product where it's just going to launch one day and then it's going to be everywhere within a few years. And that's, that's just not the case with this type of technology for a variety of reasons. It's really going to be a very systematic, gradual rollout of the technology um, and in multiple senses in terms of how many trucks are out there, in terms of which geographies we're doing, which use cases we're serving, like you asked uh, just a moment ago. And so as a result, um, we're able to really focus on the areas where there's differentiated value from AV technology, which correlates almost exactly to the least attractive jobs uh, for truckers today. And now when you pair that with the overarching trend in freight industry, which is it's still growing like gangbusters, um, there are um, reports out that say, hey, even with uh, quite tremendous deployment and adoption of autonomous trucks, still 10, 15 years from now, we're going to need more truck drivers than we have today. So even with this technology trend, there's not going to be a reduction. There's going to be an increase. This is uh, from a study from Roland Berger that uh, Craig Harper at, at J.B. Hunt um, has cited in some of our presentations together, which I just think is such an astounding way to look at it. Um, and then when you think about things like the transfer hub model, 
uh, where you can take like the long haul portion of a journey and automate that, but you're still uh, really leveraging the, um, the human expertise to solve the, the toughest part of the driving, which is uh, you know, navigating uh, metropolitan areas, that ends up being uh, a prospectively a lot more attractive job where someone can go out, do a ton of deliveries in one day and be home every night with their family. Um, so I think it, the answer is resoundingly clear that there's going to be um, tons of benefit and shared synergy between the autonomous solution and then the manned solution, which is only going to evolve and, and grow as we're able to deploy the AV solution in parallel. Yeah, I, I mean, increasingly it looks like we're going to need everything at our disposal just to move all the freight in the future. And, That's right. Uh, yeah. you know, and sort of a side benefit, and you know, maybe not a side benefit, maybe one of the primary benefits is to um, provide jobs where more drivers are home at night, um, maybe shift more toward a regional hall, a local delivery uh, kind of application uh, that probably fits better with a, you know, the preferences of a larger number of drivers uh, in the future uh, based on, you know, the trends that we're seeing today. Uh, but there's no doubt that we're going to need truck drivers uh, for the, for, you know, for, for the really the foreseeable future. Um, and, and automation has a you know, potential to, to help uh, ease the, the burden on the industry uh, as well. Um, you know, I do want to also go back to, um, you know, uh, I think a really interesting facet of your, your partnership with J.B. Hunt. Uh, and uh, that's uh, how you plan to eventually at least look at ways to uh, you know, explore an integration between Waymo Via and uh, J.B. Hunt 360, you know, their uh, freight matching platform. Uh, I know that's pretty early in the in conceptual stages, but just tell us a little bit more about that concept and, and how that might look in the future. Yeah, it's definitely still early days, but we're really excited to explore the scope and requirements needed for integrating Waymo's technology with the JB Hunt 360 platform, as well as with their you know technology infrastructure for their entire business and their operating business as well. Um, and there may be opportunities to create new technology solutions, but I think the overarching theme is around innovation and technology, right? So JB Hunt 360 is, is very much a technology innovation that JB Hunt's been able to bring to bear in the industry. And when you think about deploying autonomous vehicles at scale, I think us collectively in an industry have a sense, but certainly don't know all the specifics of all of the supporting innovation that's going to need to be developed in order to make the best use of these trucks. So things like uh, keeping the truck utilized so one of the potential values of an autonomous vehicle is uh, you can run that thing near 24 seven. It's not gonna be restricted to hours of service the way a human operated truck is today. Uh, but in order to utilize it 24 seven, you need to have loads ready to carry 24 seven. And so how do you uh, find that match between the capacity and the demand? And that's something uh, that the JB Hunt 360 platform is built to do. So. Lots of opportunities, early days, and, and something we're excited, excited to explore with them together. Yeah, we'll be watching that closely uh, when, the, when the time comes. Uh, but, you know, we, we had a lot of conversation about all the steps that are necessary to you know, take this technology from, you know, concept and, you know, the, the research and development phase to full commercialization. And, you know, obviously, it's not just a, a technology and an engineering challenge. Uh, you're also going to need buy-in from shippers, from motor carriers, uh, but also elected officials, government regulators, uh, as well as the motoring public who will be sharing the road with these vehicles. Uh, so describe what you're doing at Waymo to help kind of build that trust and, and comfort level uh, with the technology, you know, not just within the industry, but you know, with society at large. Yeah, I mean, we are very intentionally taking a gradual and incremental approach uh, to our deployment from a testing standpoint, from an eventual commercial deployment standpoint, and seeking feedback from all of those stakeholders that you mentioned uh, within industry, within government, within the pub public, uh, to make sure that the approach that we're taking uh, resonates and is respected by uh, the folks that we need buy-in from. Uh, and we've seen really strong results from that across the board within trucking, within passenger cars. Um, some of the examples of the things that we do are public education efforts, for example, through our Let's Talk Autonomous Driving uh, initiative, where we've partnered with other industry stakeholders um, across uh, you know, all portions of industry in order to uh, just increase public awareness of what does autonomous driving technology 
mean? What are we talking about? When is it going to be here? How's it going to impact uh, the public as road users? How does the technology work? Um, and then really on across the board, the strategy is just adding up a very thorough approach of a lot of small efforts. Just as a small example, uh, we would never uh, go, you know, test and operate uh, somewhere without um, having a conversation, giving notice and getting feedback and, you know, informal and formal approval from, you know, all stakeholders uh, from, you know, public and government, um, which is something that, you know, one could argue that you don't necessarily need to do that every single time. But given how new and impactful this technology is and, uh, and its potential, but also, you know, uh, people just aren't that familiar with it in the grand scheme of things yet. You know, we think it's really worth it just to be thorough up front and just make sure no one's ever surprised by anything. Everybody knows what's going on every step of the way. Um, and we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on that approach from all, all the types of stakeholders that you mentioned. So we're just going to continue our, our game there and, and just kind of make sure every time before we take another big step that everybody's really looped in and, and supportive of what we're doing. You know, I remember you know, maybe six, seven years ago when this really, when autonomous trucking really became a, a topic in the trucking industry, something that wasn't just purely futuristic, but something that you know, could really happen. And uh, looking, you know, where we are today, it's amazing how far we've come from, you know, just several years ago. Uh, and, you know, this has been a, a really a great window into that. You know, I really appreciate the conversation, Charlie, but uh, I think we've reached a, a good stopping point here. So I'll leave it there. You know, thank you again for joining the podcast and, and sharing your insights. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Seth. I mean, it's an exciting time for us. It's an exciting time for the industry, as you mentioned. So always happy to, to share some thoughts and, and help people get an insight into what's going on with our, our program. Yeah. Thanks again. In times like these, it's crucial to stay informed. Transport Topics is offering all the information you need to make business decisions in these unprecedented times. And in the wake of the many event cancellations and group gatherings, TT ensures a virtual way to consume business content and conversation. To join the conversation and stay ahead of the news, follow Transport Topics on all social outlets or by visiting ttn.ws forward slash stay informed. Next on Road Signs, we're excited to welcome Robert Brown, Chief Strategy Officer at Spartan Radar. Thanks for joining us, Robert. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate it having me on. Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar with your company, Spartan is a supplier of radar technology for autonomous vehicles and advanced driver assistance systems. So to start us off, just tell us a little bit more about the business and how it's working to support the development of ADAS and autonomous driving. Yeah, great question. Um, so Seth, as you know, you, uh, you know me from my days at uh, Too Simple and you know, spent the last four years there working on you know, level four autonomous trucks. And from what I've you know, seen both from the industry and also from the technology is, is radar is a really underused sensor of for the level four players and that, you know, where radar can be today and where it can go in the next few years will really help scale that what I'm calling generalized level four, where you're going to have, you know, at scale thousands of trucks operating in the Texas triangle um, or hauling between Phoenix and Dallas. Right. And, you know, where radar can be for level four is uh, incredible, right? Because it can handle the, the robustness of, uh, of all weather conditions the ruggedization in the sensors, and it's a proven proven commodity. And then, you know, in my last four years at Too Simple, even though we weren't focused on level two, it's amazing when you're hanging out with UPS and J.B. Hunt and Schneider and Warner and, and you know, Too Simple's partner, U.S. Express, you hear about the issues facing the driver assistance, right? You know, I think uh, when we just saw, or two times ago, we saw each other at uh, ATA mc &E, they had that whole panel. Uh, from the driver's perspective of, of false positives and, and constantly, you know, the, the, the system, you know, dinging at drivers and driving them crazy and warning them things that, that don't exist, right? So when I met Spartan and they can improve the radar performance uh, through software, so you're not asking to, you know, replace, you know, all the, all the sensors from a driver's assistance perspective, I was like, Heck yes, <laughs> because, you know, there's a there's a safety, you know, you could argue there's a safety uh, epidemic going on right now with uh, 
with all the data coming out from NHTSA and an FMCSA related to crashes, these nuclear verdicts. So when Spartan came a call and I said, if, if you guys can do this, and so far the technical team is, is second to none, um, I saw an opportunity where we can sell into ADAS market and improve the safety systems for the driver assistance. And then of course, you know, getting the industry ready for that scaled production of level four trucks over the next few years. And I think for autonomous vehicles in particular, this is a you know, kind of a unique approach because so much of the focus has been on LIDAR sensors, right? You know, yeah. essentially using, you know, spinning lasers to detect the vehicle surroundings. And of course, a lot of attention, you know, many companies have suppliers of LIDAR systems have, have risen to prominence, but uh, tell us why you see next generation radar as such an important enabler, uh, not just of ADAS, but also uh, highly automated uh, forms of, of automated driving. Yeah, and, and Seth, a, a little bit is this, I think the, the LiDAR industry was 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 tracking, at least with the promises of the level four industry, right? You know, when th a few years ago at CES, when you had Lyft saying that, you know, they'd have thousands of, of, of robo taxis uh, hitting the market and, you know, the hype cycle of all these promises, uh, all these LiDAR companies are like, great, you know, this is a huge TAM for us. But uh and most of the engineers and engineering talent coming out of CMU, coming out of DARPA, coming out of all the universities that the level four folks recruit from, they work with LIDAR. Uh, that's what they work in at university. That's what they work in, in, at these companies. They, it generates beautiful point clouds. It generates, you know, it's a, a very um, elegant sensor. But if you talk to the carriers um, who buy trucks, right, one is the bomb cost, the, the uh, Build materials, you know, you need to keep that at, at a relative level. Um, and LiDAR is quite expensive. The cost is coming down. Uh, and then, of course, almost even more importantly, is, is the ruggedization and uptime. You talk to any carrier and you, you want your asset out there as much as possible, especially with the increased cost of what a level four truck would be. You want to maximize that truck, right? You want, you know, with no hours of service, uh, restrictions for a level four vehicles. There's, there's no human in it from an hours of service perspective. You want that out there, you know, 15, 16, possibly 20 hours a day uh, making money and, you know, delivering that freight. And, and LiDAR just doesn't have that legacy or robustness to handle the wear and tear of, and the, kind of this, the brutal nature uh, of the highway. People think, uh, you know, you know, two simple primarily tests in the Sun Belt. <laughs> Try rolling through Louisiana and the June bugs and and and, and the haboobs and the dust storms and just the just the just the wear and tear the vibration uh, that the, anyway it's just a, a, your audience all knows this so I don't need to explain to them the the rigors that a truck uh, goes out in, in the real world and 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 rather than just like a science project R and D so that's where I think you know where Spartan fits in and 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 radar is a sensor where you can you know increase the the level to start competing um, from a, a performance uh, of LiDAR, but you, again, you have the, the ruggedization, the cost, and, and again, the, the proven track record uh, of automotive grade radar. Sure, and you know, to risk going uh, perhaps a little bit too deep into the weeds, uh, I'll still ask a technical question. You know, of course, at you know, Spartan Radar, you're focusing on biomimetic radar that is designed to mimic human perception so just tell us uh, in a nutshell, you know, how that improves upon the radar systems that are already in widespread use uh, today, both in the automotive and trucking industries for uh, driver assist technology. So your audience might actually really appreciate this. Um, you know, I know the trucking audience is a bunch of very proud Americans and support the military. The team at Spartan, the technology team, all comes from defense uh, in aerospace. And so they've been putting um, radar software and technology on projects like the F-18 and F-35 for decades. And what's really unique about this team is that, you know, uh, the F-18, you know, they can't re-spin what they say, like put a new, you know, like hardware configuration on that, that plane, right? But there's so many new things that that needs to do over the years to help protect that, that, uh, that pilot and the, the American warfighter. So they had to do this through software and they had to do this you know, make it battle ready and basically react to what it needs to react to, you know, whether it's, you know, a missiles coming at it or other threats, 
it, the radar needed to focus on what matters. And they've taken that through what we call biomimetic and, and the radar becomes, you know, we almost, you've heard of it, the intelligence behind it, but it's not where it's thinking it's reacting that fight or flight where it, where the radar is focusing on that pedestrian or bicyclist that's, that's fast approaching the vehicle. Um, and it's not worrying about, um, you know, the other scenes it's focusing on what matters. And, uh, a lot of folks say, you know, radar is a, and my engineers get mad at me when I say it's noisy because it's, you're conflating things, but it, with the, with the super resolution and focusing on what matters really crystallizes the picture and lets the vehicle know, um, you know, which saves time, which saves distance which all that good stuff. Um, and, and that's what we call biomimetic radar. And it, it, it it all comes from, you know, our defense legacy of, of decades of, of, of building um, radar software and upgrades, you know, over the um, that allow, you know, our American warfighter to, to be the best and brightest and, and taking that to uh, Spartan Raider from a transportation and automotive perspective. Sure. And I'd also like to touch on some uh, recent news as well. So Spartan Radar is partnering with Under Inc. It's another technology supplier uh, with the goal of providing higher resolution sensors for both ADAS and uh, autonomous vehicle. Uh, so just tell us a little bit more about that partnership and, and what to expect. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is awesome. We're very excited. This will be our first public partnership with exactly what uh, laying out what we just said, you know, working with existing players, uh, incredible hardware uh, you know, that we've, we've worked with them, but improving their sensor to, to make folks safer today in the ADAS market. Um, you know, folks like, you know, uh, US Express and Eric Fuller is a part of that announcement, um, you know, uh, and then of course, getting ready for, you know, US Express has had an announcement with Aurora and the a public partnership with Too Simple. You know, those are the type of folks we want to work with, uh, leaders in the space uh, that are, you know, pro safety and pushing innovation. And, um, you know, very excited. It's been a relationship in the, in the making several months, uh, but now we get to talk about it publicly and, and get to, as we grow together and get to start selling uh, product jointly and uh, improving road safety, uh, which is why we're all here. And, you know, an interesting question about how you see the marketplace developing, um, you know, Spartan Radar, of course, is targeting both the automotive and the trucking markets. But where do you see autonomous driving technology really scaling up first? You know, do you see that happening uh, with passenger cars or with commercial trucks uh, taking the lead? I mean, I, I know I'm a, you know, people call me like the hype man for for the level four space. But I mean, just as someone that's been in the industry for quite some time and, and understand the, the limitations of it, the technology and what it can do, it has to be a fleet model. Um, and I mean, all the, and I don't need to lecture this audience on the business use cases for, for what we're trying to do in trucking, it is ripe for disruption, disruption between the driver shortage, the capacity issues, uh, the supply chain issues, being able to recruit, uh, qualified drivers with the, you know, with, with drug testing, um, you know, increasing and, and more and more drivers leaving it and also retiring. I mean, I always tell people if if the level four industry doesn't do what they say they're going to do, we're all in a world of hurt. Um, and and, you know, the notion that there's a passenger vehicle that me or you will will be able to buy off a lot and, and, and it be a true level four vehicle is is nonsense. There'll be some limited robo taxi deployments like you've seen the wonderful work Cruise is doing in San Francisco and the wonderful work Waymo has been doing outside in the suburbs of uh, a Phoenix, but for a true business model and go to market, it's going to be a fleet, the fleet model, you know, those repeatable routes uh, across I-10, you know, the Texas triangle out through Atlanta, down, you know, down through Orlando, where, where all those, those goods need to be moved. And uh, the, there's no reason why there's so many reasons why uh, the level four market is needed. Uh, and that, that the technology can meet those needs. It's not overstretching or overpromising something uh, when when delivering on that. Yeah, and uh, I think you have a really interesting uh, vantage point on this, Robert. Uh, you mentioned your your work, your previous stop at Too Simple, of course, one of the the leading developers of autonomous driving technology for commercial trucks, uh, along with several several others that you mentioned uh, as well. But you know, from your vantage point, just how much progress has been made over the past several years in this emerging field? You know, where are we today versus where we were, say, a handful of years ago? I mean, Seth, I'm just thinking when the first time we met and um, 
and we were, I mean, we were the kind of the, not, not even to say too simple, but the, the truck level four trucks were kind of the black sheep of, of automation, right? Everyone was talking about Uber and, and robo taxis and yada, yada, yada. And over the last four years, you've seen just an incredible uh, amount of investment. I mean, just billions, literally billions of dollars invested in the space. Uh, last count, I mean, you guys had come out with that awesome list of the top you know, 25 carriers, I'd say over I, pretty much everyone on that list has either invested public partnership, you know, some sort of relationship with one of the level four developers. Uh, some of the existing, you know, robo taxis have now pivoted to trucks. You know, you've seen what Waymo uh, has come out and publicly talked about with in their recent announcements with JB Hunt and CH Robinson. You obviously Aurora with their work with uh, Pat Car and Volvo and, and FedEx. And then, as, you know, my previous company and used to have, you know, Embark and Kodiak and Locomation and, um, you know, Daimler and Torque. I mean, it's just all the OEMs are partnered up, all the major carriers, it, um, the regulatory path. I mean, it's just everyone is working together um, um, to do what they do best to deliver this to the market. So it's just I, I'm very proud, uh, one, uh, of the industry and proud of my former employer, Too Simple, as well for driving that help driving that. And it's just uh, really cool to see that, you know, that what this technology can do for the trucking industry. And then more importantly, you can argue what it can do for us as a society, whether it's, uh, my, you know, we hauled some watermelons, whether that's, you know, saving some shelf life uh, for strawberries. And uh, so I don't throw them away in my trash can, or whether that's, um, you know, getting, you know, the supply chain, you know, secured, right? So making sure shelves are stocked and 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 uh, and then, and this audience is a very um, you know trucking audience. And again, I always like to remind people when I talk about driverless trucks, there's segments of the of the uh, routes that will be driverless, but there'll always be need for drivers within supporting that, right? You know, whether that's the last mile local pickup and delivery, you know, maintaining these vehicles, launching these vehicles. So again, want people excited about the level four space, but also don't want them frightened. That if you go into trucking today as a young person, you'll retire in trucking. As, um, you know, there will always be a, a space and role for you. Well, thank you for that perspective, and I think it's uh, important for us all to you know not lose sight of that uh, bigger picture. And uh, you know, I think that the industry at large has uh, I think come to a I think a better understanding of that uh, in recent years as well. Um, you know, seeing the technology is something that's going to complement the the workforce rather than you know threatening it or, or displacing it. Um, but before I let you go, Robert, you know, I'd like to end on a question, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, kind of that, that crystal ball question. So, you know, I'd ask you to just look ahead 10 years from now, just how widespread and how much more sophisticated do you think ADAS technology will be in trucking and what role do you see for autonomous trucks in that time frame? Yeah. I mean, the next 10 years is going to completely transform probably the greatest transformation in transportation um, since the advent of the internal combustion engine, because you have a congruency of electric vehicles and zero emission vehicles with uh, ADAS, high, highly function uh, driver assistance systems, along with AVs. It's going to be uh, an incredible, it is, I should say, an incredible time to be a part of this, uh, where you're going to have ADAS systems that are aren't causing drivers headaches and, and, and ding at them and saving lives. Uh, because again, uh, passenger vehicles and, and people treat trucks terribly and cut them off and, you know, pass on the right and hide in their blind spots, all the terrible things that passenger vehicles do to trucks, all that will go away uh, with, with companies like Spartan Radar and, and others in the space um, and making them, you know, making them safer and making sure when they get to go home every night uh, to their families. And then of course, with, you know, the advent of EV and AV, you're going to see, you know, decarbonization, uh, which we all need from, from, a, from a global warming perspective and, and reducing carbon out of the supply chain and ensuring up that, that supply chain from, a, from an economic perspective and unleashing, um, you know, the power uh, if you don't have a constraint, an artificial constraint, whether that's a human driver or um, the safety regulations of hours of service, you can really let the supply chain uh, roll and, 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 and put more dollars in people's pockets, uh, like the study that USDOT put out, and, and creating uh, new opportunities to innovate. I mean, it's just it's going to be an incredible time 
uh, in the next five to 10 years, as you see uh, just the whole transportation space completely transform uh, with this new innovative technologies. Well, hey, this has been a really good conversation, Robert. Uh, I appreciate all your insights, but I think we've uh, reached a good stopping point there. So we'll uh, draw to a close uh, at this point. But you know, thank you again for joining the podcast and and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you, Seth. I appreciate you and uh, um, and appreciate all you do for for the industry. Did you know you can ask Alexa to open transport topics in just one minute? You will hear the biggest trucking headlines of that day. Be prepared and start your morning off right with Transport Topics. Before we close, let's take a moment to revisit our original question. How are technology developers and their industry partners paving the way for autonomous trucking? As we've heard from our guests, autonomous trucks are still under development, but this nascent business has made significant advances over the past several years. And much of that progress is connected to the industry partnerships that have formed between technology developers and their more established industry partners, including truck manufacturers, carriers, shippers, and logistics providers. The technology itself also has improved as developers refine their autonomous driving systems and integrate that technology with major truck brands, while suppliers continue to introduce more advanced sensors to the market. Autonomous trucks are still in their infancy, and the timing of a true commercial rollout remains elusive but it's clear that the introduction of autonomous trucking operations is closer than ever. If you've enjoyed this episode of Road Signs, please let others know. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If my questions have sparked questions of your own, share them with me and the Road Signs team. You can email us at share at ttnews.com. We'll read them and respond daily. And of course, we'll be back in two weeks with a fresh episode of Road Signs. Until then, I'm Seth Clevenger. Thank you for listening. 